given f of x equals to a over x minus 1 plus 3. Um, all right, so this is a hyperbola, hyperbola. Write down the equations of the asymptotes. Right, so let's talk about the basics quickly. So we know that a hyperbola has a horizontal, or sorry, a vertical asymptote, and it has a horizontal asymptote, for example. Um, now, this part here, what does that do to a graph when they have an x like that and then they say minus? Well, what you must remember is that that part there moves the graph, moves one unit right. I know some of you want to say left and you're like, Kevin, wake up, buddy, it's a minus. But remember, with the x's, it's always opposite. Minus means left, I mean, minus means right, plus means left. So it's got to keep that in mind. And then this plus three over here, that moves the graph. That's that's moves the graph up or down. But when it's plus three, it just moves the three units up. Okay, that one's not the opposite. So plus means up, minus does mean down. So, okay, so imagine you have this hyperbola. Now, a hyperbola normally starts over here, right at the center. That is where all graphs begin. And there is asymptotes, we just can't see them because they're hiding in the x and y axis. But you could imagine that there's a dotted line there, and you could imagine that there's a dotted line there, okay? Because there's always asymptotes, but we just can't see it. Like I said, it's buried behind the x and the y axis. However, the graph then gets moved one unit to the right. So that means that this dotted line will move one unit to the right. So we can say that this x value is one. Anywhere on this line, the x value is one. How do you know that? Well, we know the x value here is one, and then it just stays the same on that vertical line. And then the graph, the dotted line, there will be also be a dotted line that moves three places upwards, okay? Like that, okay. So the equations will just be x equals to one. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. I'm trying to draw the graph already, but I think they're gonna ask us to draw it uh, here. Okay, so then, and then we also know that y is three. Those are the equations of your asymptote. Next question, determine x and y intercepts in terms of a. Okay, so we know that y is equal to a over x minus one plus three. And they want us to find the x and the y intercept. So to find the x intercept, how do we do that? We make y zero. We've been doing this since grade nine. Um, so we make y zero, so let's go do that. Okay, now you must solve this however you're comfortable with. Um, I'm gonna take the three to the left. Now some learners just do a little swap with the minus three and the x minus one. But what I like to do is I take this x minus one and I multiply it up to the top over there. It's almost like getting a common denominator if you wanna think about it like that. Okay, and then we just wanna, um, I'm not gonna multiply the minus three into the bracket. You can if you want. But we're trying to get x alone, so I'm rather just gonna divide by minus three. Okay, you see how we just swapped those out actually? So some learners just do that in one step. Um, now I'm just gonna take the minus one over to the other side. So we have minus a over three. I just don't like having the minus like that, so I just rather put it in the front. Okay, well, yep. And then I'm gonna take this minus one, I'm gonna take it over, so it's gonna become plus one. So it's um, minus a over three, or you can even think of that as minus a third a plus one. So you could even say minus a third a plus one. That's fine too, but I'm just gonna leave it as um, minus a over three plus one. Some of you might have this order switched around, which is also fine. So you might have one minus a over three. It's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. So that's fine too. Okay, so we've got that. So let's just quickly go um, fill this in. So the x, um, ah, but they want the x intercept. Ah, so we must remember that with the x intercept, y is zero. So we must say um, minus a over three plus one and zero. Now we need to go get the y-intercept. So to get a y-intercept, what do we do? We make x zero. So we're gonna get y equals to a over x is zero, so that's zero minus one plus three, and so that's gonna end up getting y equals to minus a, that's what that part will become, uh, plus three. So minus a plus three. So the x is zero and the y is minus a plus three. The next one says, given that a equals minus one. Oh, thank you for that. They tell us what a is, and now they just want us to draw the graph. 
So because they've told us what a is, they've told us that a is minus 1. We can quickly go work out the proper x-intercept now. Um, but we know it's currently minus a over 3 plus 1. So we can just go minus, minus 1 over 3 plus 1. And so that gives us uh, 4 over 3. Um, or you can write it as 1 comma 3 3. So that's the x-intercept. And then the y-intercept... Um, we know that that was just minus a plus 3, so that's going to be minus. Now, a is minus 1, so we do it like that, and that's going to give us 4. Okay, so we've got the x and the y intercepts now, so we can just go place those on the graph. So 1, 3, 3, can put that there. So we say 1, 3, 3, and 0, and then the y intercept is 4, so that would be above here, so that would say... Um, 0 and 4. And that's it. We can now draw the graph because we know that it then goes like that and like that. And we've already got the asymptotes on the diagram. Last question for this one says that the graph F is shifted 3 units to the left and 2 units down. Write down the new equation. Okay, so it's going to go 3 units to the left and then two units down. So all that you really need to do, because we know that this equation at the moment is a is minus one. So that's what we have at the moment. Now, if you slide this graph left and down, whoopsie, what happened there? If you slide this graph a little bit to the left and a little bit down, it doesn't change the a value. All that it's gonna do is it's just gonna move your asymptotes. Uh, your asymptotes, your vertical and your horizontal. So your horizontal asymptote um, was x equals to 1. Now it's going to move three places to the left. So it's going to end up going here where x is equal to minus 2. Okay. So that means that we're going to have minus 1 and then you're going to have x plus 2. Because remember, plus means that your graph has moved two places to the left. And then this, what are they going to do? Two units down. Okay, well, this is currently y equals to 3. So if you move it two places down, then it would go down to the point where y is equal to 1. So you're just going to say plus 1 over here. And so that is the final answer for that one. Oh, sorry, they did say in terms of a. So we'll leave it as in terms of a. So we'll just put a little a over there. I did go check the memo. If you fill in the minus 1, um, in the place of A, they do mark that correct as well. They literally say it on the memo.